Hello everybody and welcome back to Crochet Through Corona. We have a new project here just ready for the weekend. And um, this is a request from one of our um, group participants, group members, group members, that's the word I was lo looking for. Um, so to this weekend, we are going to be making these lovely little garlands. Um, so the individual uh, circles that are all attached together and you can make this as long or as little as you like depending on where you want to, to put it you can use as many or as few colors as you like um, and depending on the yarn you use you can make them as big or little as you like so I'll tell you what we need to make one this size so you can kind of get a gist of it by my finger um, but then if you, you if you want smaller uh, circles or larger ones you can just either use smaller yarn or larger yarn what a thicker weight yarn so that's how simple it is this pattern is taken from um, Lily sugar and cream festive garland um, and it's a free pattern available on the internet so if you google yarn inspirations um, Lily sugar and cream festive garland then you will be able to find it I will also put a link in the comments um, so you can have a look at reading the, the pattern yourself so what you'll need is you'll if you're going to do one similar size to this you'll need some worsted weight yarn i'm still using the same type of yarn that we've used all the way through crochet through corona um, and 4.5 millimeter hook your darning needle and a pair of scissors so i'm just going to push that back a little bit so we've got space to work now generally this pattern is really repetitive um, so each circle is pretty much the same. The only slight difference is in the first circle. So I'm going to show you the first circle and then the second circle and then um, circle the second and all the other circles will be exactly the same. So there's only the first one there's a slight variation on. So we're making a circle but in previous sessions we've made a circle using um, the magic ring we don't, aren't going to do that for this pattern we're going to have a really fixed size open circle at the middle as you can see there there's kind of a gap right it's set and it's not going to get any smaller or bigger um, so it's a different way of making a starting circle and it's using the chain method so we just cast on as we normally do ready to make a chain and we chain four There we go, I've got my four. And then we put a slip stitch to the first chain. So a slip stitch, if you remember, is we're just going all the way, we're gonna skip these stitches all the way back to the first chain. We're gonna yarn over, pull through, and pull through the loop on your hook. So that's a slip stitch. I'll show you that one more time. So we're gonna chain four. Oh, I'm getting all a bit mismatched here. one two three four and then we're going into the very first chain just into the top of the v we'll yarn over and pull through and then we'll pull through the loop that's in our hook as well and then we're going to chain one and that is our little center loop secure and now we the rest of this round is going to be worked into the middle of that loop so you, it's going to be really important for you to find where that middle is don't go into that first chain which might look quite big now it's into the actual middle of the loop and we're going to do a single crochet into the middle of the circle and then we're going to chain two one two and do another single crochet into the center of that circle and chain two and we repeat this for a total of four times so you'll have four single crochets and uh, four lots of chain two I should just clarify how we do a single crochet so we're putting our, our hook into the middle of the circle we yarn over and pull through yarn over and pull through both loops on the hook and then chain two one two releasing some yarn there and then you can see where your single crochets have been so I've got one two three so I've just got one more single crochet to do and then my final to chain two and we are going to then slip stitch to the top of that first single crochet top of that first single crochet right there so the slip stitch was to yarn over and pull through and pull straight through the loop on your hook 
And now you can see you've got that quite fixed centre circle. So you're really on your way. So that's the first round complete and there's only three rounds to this pattern so it's quite quick. Now we're going to slip stitch into that first chain two space. So we're going to go straight into that next big gap. Can you see it there? And we're going to slip stitch so we yarn over, pull through and pull through the loop on the hook. Now we're working into that space and we're going to chain two. Now this chain two will count as our first half double crochet in this round and in all the other rounds. So the first, the chain two counts as half double crochet. So when you slip stitch back to the beginning after, this is the chain, this top chain here, that's where you're gonna be joining with. And then we're going to do three half double crochets into that same chain two space. That's one, and the half double crochet is um, before you start, you yarn over, you insert your hook into the space, yarn over and pull through, yarn over and pull through all three loops on your hook. And one more for in here. There we go, so I've got my chain two and three half double crochets. Then in the next chain two space, just double checking, yep, yeah, we'll do four half double crochets straight into the next half do to half um to the next chain two space so we're just going to move straight on from there we yarn over and this time we insert our hook into the next chain two space yarn over and pull through and we repeat that for the next four half double crochets that are going into that space one two three if you lose track you can easily count your half double crochets they're quite easy to count you can separate them apart and you can count them so i've got four in there and then we're going to do that into the next chain two space as well so another four into the next one yarn and then final chain two space we're just going to do another four half double crochet straight into that chain two space and I should just clarify when it, it is literally into the space it's not into the stitches it's into the gap that's created underneath that chain two space so there we go we've got four in there one two three four and then we slip stitch into the top of that chain two space uh, to the original chain two which I pointed out earlier so it's quite tricky to see but there's my first chain one and then that's my chain two so these bits are actually really quite fiddly or well, I find them fiddly maybe if your chains are a bit bigger than mine um, and you have a looser stitch then maybe you won't find it as fiddly but you just want to get both parts that be over your hook yarn over and pull through and carry on and pull through the loop on your hook. Round two complete. So you're two thirds of the way there. Fantastic. If you um, are following the pattern, it will always tell you how many stitches you should have at the end of each row. So you can go back and count. So you've got, you count the V's along the top. So you should have 16 half double crochets. And remember that that chain two counts as one. So the chain two counts as one just there. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. So I've gone through and counted the actual half the, the pillars of the stitch. You can do it exactly the same all the way back. So we've got one on the V's. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. And then you don't count that one that the stitch is just going through because you've slip stitched into that one. So. so I've got 16, you should have 16. And if you have, let's carry on. So for round three, we're just going to start by chaining two again and again this will count as your first half double crochet and then in the same space as you've just come out of with that slip stitch so I'm going to zoom in a little bit there so you can see going back into that same little nook there 
little hole in under the stitch you're going to do another half double crochet so that counts as two in that first stitch then we're going to do one half double crochet in the next stitch and two in the next stitch so this is increasing as we did in um, what, what pattern the coasters that we did so to make the circle bigger and not get all curly we need to increase the amount of stitches so we're doing one in one stitch and then we're doing two in the same stitch after that if any of this isn't clear please do drop a comment underneath the video and I will definitely try and get back to you as soon as possible really so we're just doing one and then two in the next stitch and we're doing this all the way around And if you lose track of where you're up to, you can always just kind of pull it apart a bit and I can see that I've got two stitches going into that hole, that stitch there, and I've got one into that stitch there, so this time I should be doing another one into the same stitch. Right, so I have to admit to a little error here. So you should be finishing on a one half double crochet. And the reason that I'm not, I'm on a two, is because I still need to do another one half double crochet and I'm gonna have to do it into my slip stitch to compensate because I actually missed a stitch all the way back here at the beginning. That very first stitch is actually tricky and I've done this a number of times when I've been making it. So when we did, um, we chained two, and then we did a half double crochet into the same stitch. The first stitch is actually just after it there. I'll see if I can point it out with my hook a bit better. Just in there. So that is actually the first stitch and I've missed it. Now I could go through and re-pull it all out, which I probably should do to if we're doing it properly, but um, I'm not going to because I'm just gonna put an extra one in that slip stitch on this occasion. On some patterns it would matter more and I would go and pull it out, but on this occasion it's actually not gonna make much difference at all. So I'm just going to put my extra one half double crochet in that slip stitch. Normally we would not work into that slip stitch. So this is a cheat. Um, so you should have um, finished on a one half double crochet in the last stitch, which is this one here. And then we slip stitch to join to the top of that chain two again, which is that fiddly bit just there. So I'm going to try and get through both parts of that stitch. There we go. And then this is the bit that's slightly different than all the other circles. Now we're going to just chain two and pull through and fasten off. And so I'm just going to cut the yarn and pull the yarn all the way through. Then I'm going to get my darning needle and thread it and to fasten off neatly I could just pull it all the way back but I'm actually going to be attaching the attaching the, um, the following circles into this chain here so I found that the best way to fasten off is to follow the thread back down so if you see there I'm going to follow this thread in here and then into the back of the work. Now don't pull through too hard because you need to have that loop still available to join your next circle to. And then we fasten off the same as we have with all our other projects. We just go through th back and two three times trying to catch different threads with our yarn to make sure it's secure and not going to unravel. And 
and then final time going back through and then we can just trim that off and then we do the same with this thread here to run my center circle to be honest it's really unlikely that this is going to come apart but just to be on the safe side and especially since it's not something that's likely to be pulled apart much not a baby toy or anything but you never know if you choose to dangle this over a baby it could be a baby toy so we will just make sure it's secure back and two three times again and then trim and we have our first part of our garland three rows a nice little circle not perfect as I admitted because um, I should have had that stitch over here instead but practice makes perfect um, and the pressure of doing it on film is clearly getting to me um, so I'm gonna pause this video there to give you time to practice and get your first circle done the second circle is very similar but um, it does have a slight difference in it so I will do another video with the second circle that you then repeat for all the others I hope you enjoyed this video and find this pattern easy to follow if you have any questions or comments please do let me know in um, the comments below either on the website or on Facebook Happy hooking and speak to you soon.